Okay, so now that we've got our player running and jumping, um, let's actually try something that we haven't actually tested yet. Uh, the player currently can jump really high and it works and everything, but um, one of the parts in development is to actually start considering the other elements inside of the game. So, for instance, in Mario there's definitely going to be some uh, bricks or blocks or things that are um, above the character as they're walking around. And for the Mario character, um, if we were to put a block above him and jump, so for instance, we crouch and jump, uh, do you see how long he stays up there? He's actually staying the full length of the uh, the height of the jump, so he's he's hanging out longer than he should be when he actually hits the block. Um, if we want to make sure that we control that element of it, uh, this is one of those parts, uh, again, is where I would say, you know, if, if you want to try it, um, it's just going to be a few lines of code, but see if you can figure it out. What What is it that's actually happening? You know, when, when he jumps, uh, it hits, say, for instance, here, he's going at about a, uh, um, probably about uh, around a 7 or so for his height, and he still has 8, 9, and 10 to go before he gets to the actual height. Well, if we want him to hit and then actually just go back down right after the hit, um, try to figure out what it is you'd look for, see if there's something on the character controller, see if there's something in code you could come up with so that when a collision occurs on the top of the head, that it actually forces him back down so he doesn't hang uh, and kind of float up there for a while. Um, so if you want, try to think about it. Uh, if, you, if you're not really sure about it, um, uh, I'd, I'd still suggest, you know, spend spend five minutes at least, spend ten minutes uh, looking it over. Um, if you want to uh, dig into some uh, some of the, uh, the scripting reference for a while, that'd be a great idea. Um, once you're done, you can just come back and start working on this next part. Uh, I'll go ahead and go through the part right now. Um, what I would do uh, if it was if it was me trying to figure it out, um, I'd probably go to the character controller, and on the character controller, I would be looking for uh, something that sounded like um, uh, a collision or something similar to it. And uh, we've got one, let's see, detect collision. Uh, this one sounds like it would be, let's see, so others should have rigid bodies, probably not wanting something that complicated. Um, we have on controller collider hits, uh, sending a message out. Uh, we've got a collision flags. Now that that actually sounds a little bit more in line with what we're thinking of in terms of being able just to have uh, some some type of feedback come back for us. Um, let's see what part of the capsule collided with the environment during the last uh, move call. So this is since we're using the dot move, we actually have access to this. So let's go ahead and click on this one. And it sounds like even from the looks of it, um, let's see. Character controller flags, uh, we've got a collision flag above. So if we click on this one, maybe we'll get a little bit more information on it. So notice our collision flags uh, actually has multiple options. We've got sides, uh, we have none, uh, above, and below. Well, our character controller on the above part is what we're looking for. Uh, we want it to actually hit the head. So as a test, you could easily just put in if, con if the uh, controller collision flag um, is hitting, we say is equal to the uh, above moment, so if its flag is equal to above, then we could print something just to see if it works. So let's jump back into the code here. And on this part, um, I actually want it to be right before, like based on everything here, the last step that we want to actually have happen uh, is to um, is this part to make sure that this is going to get put into it. But right before that, let's actually go ahead and just set up a check for it. We'll just say that if uh, the controller collision, um, and we've got collision flags right there. So if the collision flags is going to be equal to collision flags uh, dot above, so just like what we have over here, we're just saying that if this is going to be equal to the uh, the colliding above where the top of the head is, then let's uh, just do a quick print. Um, hit my head. All right, so we're just going to check real fast to see if this is going to work for us. So we'll go back into uh, the game. Let's go ahead and run this one. So what should happen is if I actually hit 
you'll notice it actually says hit my head. So that means that I do now have a collision uh, check for above on the collider box. So on my uh, on my player character, so for the player um, on the uh, character controller, when it hits the the controller part, then it actually does print out it hits my head. All right. So what that means is that if we want to control the character itself, so for instance in here, instead of having a print statement, let's actually um, let's set up a variable up here. So up at the top, let's do one more private variable. And this private variable, let's just call this one like a after hit force down or something. So we'll say after the uh, the hit, um, we're gonna force our player down. Alright, and we'll just make this uh, equal to a float type, set it to a float type, and uh, the the amount, let's start off with just 1.0 and we'll see how it goes. So this would be uh, force player down if head hits anything. Now we could be specific with it and say that it can only, you know, that it would only affect if there were certain objects with a, a label of a type. Uh, but we want to kind of make it, we're just going to make it uh, uh, fit any any circumstance for it. So anytime he jumps and he hits his head, uh, if he's, he's just automatically going to start going back down. All right, so if we go back down to the bottom right here, so inside of our, our check for the uh, collision on the, the above part, um, let's actually just set the velocity here. So we're going to set the velocity, uh, the up and down, so the y, uh, just to zero. So we're going to stop the movement. So the moment he hits, um, if the collision flag is above, then we're going to immediately set his motion up to zero so that he stops moving upward. And at the same time, Let's actually set it so that he starts to move down. So we'll say that uh, velocity y. Oops. We're going to say that velocity y is going to uh, be subtracted from the uh, after hit force down. All right. So this will actually give us a uh, a chance to push the character back down. We could even push him down faster than he went up. So if we wanted to kind of play around with uh, the type of material, the type of objects they are, it could be something like when he hits, it actually pushes him down instead of just a, a regular uh, gravity type going down on it. So for this one, we'll just do a, uh, we're basically oops, we're applying a, uh, a force uh, downward. So player doesn't Oops, there we go. Hang in there. Alright, and then for this one, let's see, make sure we got the right thing for it. Alright, so we're just going to set uh, velocity on y uh, to zero. Um, stops upward motion. Alright. So with that one in, let's go ahead and go back to here, and let's play it out and see how it works. So what should happen is when he hits, he immediately drops down. So if you notice, it's a very quick motion now, and I'm crouching, so I should be jumping all the way up to there, but it actually stops him and pushes him right back down. Alright, so a little bit more interactive with the scene, it feels a little bit more realistic instead of just kind of floating up there. Uh, it feels like once the, the momentum uh, hits a surface, it's supposed to go down, so it kind of fits into that. Alright, so again, this is just a, a small tweak uh, to the scene, but it's one of those things that usually, even like when I was first doing this, I wouldn't have noticed until once I had a block inside the scene, and uh, I started jumping around. Um, so some of these things, they may come gradually, it may, it may not be something that you just automatically go to, but when you start playtesting, uh, you get things like that, write them down, uh, start start keeping a good list of things that you need corrected, go back and just make the additions, make the corrections to it so it works for it. Alright, so that's going to be the, uh, uh, for at least for the character, that'll be the way f to keep the character from... Uh, floating up in the air and just really provide more of a realistic sense to it and setting it to a, uh, a variable you'll be able to access this and then adjust it if you need to for uh, different types of uh, uh, situations.